Hey guys, it's your buddy, number one Marty fan here, looking at volume one of Star Wars, Lost Stars, original story by Claudia Gray, art and adaptation by Yusaku Komiyama. And I'm guessing that means this might've been like a novel or something originally. So really, really strong recommendation, really good first volume. This is one that makes me like want to go spend my money on the rest. I'm gonna write my library and tell them this is a really good series and they should get more of it. Uh, this would be like a good gift for your buddy who hates manga and you're trying to get them into manga, but they are a Star Wars person. And this is one of the best books I've seen for kind of explaining why anybody would be Team, team Empire. And like the, th the thing about like the Team Empire discussion is I see that as like a fun aspect of Star Wars ner nerdery. I don't take Star Wars, you know, super seriously as like, you know, deep political. It's, it's the same thing with Harry Potter. Harry Potter shouldn't be your only source for political discussion. Star Wars shouldn't be your only source for uh, political discussion. But one of the reasons why I think a Team Empire exists is that uh, in the movies, the the Empire are space Nazis, but the emphasis is on the word space. In the new Disney movies, the Empire are space Nazis, but it's the emphasis is space Nazis, right? So they're trying to like make you weir feel weird about liking the Empire, but in the books, there's always been kind of like this more nuanced take on it where it's not just as simple as rebels, rebels good, Empire bad. So our, uh, I get, uh, I, we're about to start the spoilers. So the spoiler free review is top tier quality art, uh, really intriguing, impactful story. It fits with the feel of what a Star Wars story should be without, kind of, kind of, without just copying, you know, tropes from the, from the movie. It's got like a good Romeo and Juliet, star crossed lovers vibe to it. So I give it a really strong recommendation. With that, let's start talking about some spoilers. So uh, it's minor spoiler, when you open up the first page, I love how this first page communicates to you kind of what you can expect. So we've got, you know, Star Warsy stuff like the Death Star and uh, the one of the Imperial Star Destroy Destroyers and Darth Vader looking imposing. And then we have our two characters looking straightforward, implying that the main drama is going to be a kind of battle of wills between these two characters, one for the Empire, one for uh, the Rebellion. So first we meet the rebel pilot, Thane, and uh, his partner, uh, the lovely, lovely uh, Twi'lek uh, tomboy gunner, uh, Yendor. Oh, and I, and I tweeted out, waifu, 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 and I'm sorry, Twitter. <laughs> I fell for a trap. That's a guy. Ah, dang it. <laughs> I feel so bad. But anyway, so uh, Thane is like a cool, you know, cool, tough pilot. I like how he comes up with a solution for how to fight the AT-ATs before Luke figures out a strategy that's some good like you know they're, they're like remembering continuity and to tie things in with the movies well while still letting some of these characters shine and then we find out that his bestiest best friend ever uh sienna he keeps having like visions of darth vader appearing and taking her from him and she's a lieutenant commander with the empire and while he wants to save her she wants to she wants to kill him what and how did this happen so we go back in time and we find out about how these two came to be and they originally lived on a planet where there were strong class and possibly ethnic barriers between them, where the first waivers are these dark-skinned, curly-haired people who were the first inhabitants of the planet and are kind of poor agricultural people. And then Thane's people are light-skinned, blonde, rich industrialists who live a modern life, right? So it's a really obvious, like, one-to-one -one parallel to uh, our race relations, except it also has, like, the strong class dimension and one of the really interesting things this suggests is that when the empire shows up this might be a good thing for people who are uh impoverished or who are slaves or who are kind of like doomed by society and by strong class structures now they don't show you too much of whether the empire really does make things more egalitarian on this planet but for the first waivers for the low class they at least see the Empire as an opportunity for things to change. And for Sienna, she directly sees the Empire as an opportunity for her to escape poverty, to escape being a second-class citizen, to escape being a uh, race that are looked down upon and su subjected to real deliberate gross racism and make something of, of herself, right? And so that upsets the calculus. Is, is the Empire still bad if the Empire eliminates racism 
or classism in some of the planets they dominate. It kind of has to force the rebels to be a bit more thoughtful in their argument against the empire. So uh, jumping forward, you know, they have like this whole cool, you know, experience of growing up in the, uh, both of them meet Grand Moff Tarkin and decide they want to join the empire. They go through rigorous training and you see some of their struggles as students. Uh, Sienna initially uh, is completely trusting of the empire. Whereas Thane, he wants to be a pilot. He doesn't really get what the deal with the rebels is, but he's a little bit more suspicious of the empire. And there's also some neat little philosophical moments, like a teacher asks them, what would you do if you were a officer and the rebels attacked your ship? And Thane's answer is, uh, get my men off the ship and self-destruct the ship. And her answer is, uh, lock myself in the quarters and fire and go down with my ship. And he thinks it's kind of, that's a different moral idea. There's a really moral idea to wanting to go, for a captain to go down with their ship and Thane doesn't get it. He, he thinks that if you have an opportunity to save yourself, why would you throw your, throw your life away pointlessly for kind of like imper, imperial honor, right? So one of the big points about this is that the empire does represents something that speaks to people in a real way. And in a way, there are good things about the empire until you start to step back and look at things like the enslavement of planets or blowing up Alderaan. That's what kind of shakes some of them out of it. So uh, fast forwarding past kind of like some of their school years, they have a little bit of a budding romance. They have uh, this ongoing, uh, what you call it? It's not a disagreement yet, just kind of like a different almost uh, attitude towards the empire. Is the empire an opportunity for personal betterment or is the empire something you believe in? A absolutely. Uh, I, l I love this drawing of Darth Vader. This is just capturing what he's supposed to be. Uh, they do redo a couple scenes from uh, the movies and, that, and that's all right. They, they're done scene for scene, but most of the book fo focuses on these two characters and kind of with the, the pur purpose of these is to kind of like tie you in time and show you, okay, here's where this point is in the movie. And now here's what's happening uh, at the same time corresponding for our other characters. There's this really great scene where Sienna meets Grand Moff Tarkin again. And he remembers her and he's really impressed by her uh, commitment and her military discipline. And she in turn finds something like really admirable or impressive uh, about the opportunities the Empire gives her. For her, the Empire is an, a chance to escape the racism of her own planet. That's just great. So I guess the real point about, about this is it shows you that there are real solid reasons why someone would like the Empire. And because Palpatine was a stupid, stupid megalomaniac emperor, he had the bright idea of blowing up Alderaan. And this, of course, is what shakes uh, Thane's confidence in the Empire from like a little question about the Empire to completely uh, gutting any love or respect he had for the Empire and sowing the seeds of sedition in his mind. The destruction of Alderaan hits really hard in this book because in the movie it's just sort of like referenced and then you know it's a fast-paced action movie so that's a bad thing but it's like boom 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 you're still having fun watching the movie and this kind of just brings home like the human uh, toll of something like that like blow blowing up planets is bad. So, fantastic. Uh, top tier art, really good character driven story. I like how uh, the uh, flash forwards and flashbacks uh, were handled. The military sequences are tie in really nicely. Uh, everything you're looking for in a Star Wars story that both has kind of like the good feel of what, what classic Star Wars is while not mirroring itself 100% to all the themes and tropes of the movies. It's doing something, you know, Romeo and Juliet's a classic. It's, it's just such a classic love plot line. You know, two lovers who tragically are on opposite sides of a of, of warring field. But I feel like it's a great, uh, it's a great mashup for the Star Wars universe. And I think you're gonna dig it. All right, I'm a Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. We don't need no stinking 10 minute videos. Catch you later.